Good morning, sir. Mary, this is most welcome. I'm ravenous. I'm pleased, sir. I wasn't sure whether I should wake you. Why? Well, you can't have had much sleep, sir. I heard you coming in not three hours ago. Last night, I came to the end of a very long journey. For months now, I have been engaged in the driest kind of study. But last night, all the barriers fell before me. I have made a great breakthrough. I'm very happy to hear it, sir. Mary, yesterday, as I was passing, I looked into the library, and there you were with your nose in a book. I had no idea you were able to read. I'm very sorry, sir. You're most welcome to borrow any book of mine that takes your fancy. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't want the other servants to think I was getting above myself. No, I can't eat any of this. Why don't I ask Mrs. Kent to call you no, some no, eggs? No, no, that's all right. Are you quite sure you don't want to tell me how you got the scars? I'm sorry, I won't ask you again. Would you leave the tray? Would you be so good as to ask Poole to organize the removal of that from my cabinet? Yes, sir. I hope you haven't been making a nuisance of yourself, Mary. No, sir. The doctor was just telling me he wants his mirror moved to his cabinet. Can you account for why the master chose to issue these instructions through you? Well, no, sir, except I told him I'd heard him coming in very late last night. You did what? You were in the master's bedroom some considerable time. What else did he say to you? We talked about doing something with the garden. The garden? It's that gloomy out there. I thought we could plant out a flower bed or two. Well, and who's going to do all this? I would. I don't mind. Aren't we finding enough work for you? I could do it on my afternoons off. My last place in the country. I think we're familiar with your reminiscences, Mrs. Kent. The master used to send for one of the housemaids. Every morning, nine o'clock, regular as clockwork. In the end, she fell in the family way and was dismissed without a reference. I often wonder what become of her. I expect now she entertains gentlemen all hours of the day. <laughs> Bradshaw. Yes, Mr. Poole. Save your breath to call your porridge. Yes, Mr. Poole. What are you doing? Mr. Poole doesn't allow me in the theater, sir. Does he not? Mirror's in place, sir. Thank you, Poole. Mary tells us you've been holding a discussion with her about the garden. Remind me what conclusion we arrived at, Mary. Flower beds there and at the corners. And a herb garden here by the kitchen. The very thing. Just what we need. Oh, and Poole, would you gather the staff in the dining room at about 6 o'clock? I have an announcement to make. Yeah. As I'm sure you're all aware, the pressure of my work has increased considerably of late. Consequently, I have decided to take on an assistant. His name is Mr. Edward Hyde, and I intend to give him the run of the house. Of course, as a rule, he will come and go by the side door of my laboratory. But when he does have the occasion to step over here, I trust you will treat him with the same respect that you've always shown toward me. You may rely on it, sir. Will the gentleman be taking his meals here, sir? Not as a rule, no. There really is no cause for concern. He is a quite remarkable young man. 